Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poker Vlog. I hope you got to spend the last couple of days with family, having a great time, eating some good food. Today, we're going to go over a session I played just a few days ago. We play some crazy pots. Maybe we get bluffed once. We get put to some big decisions. I'm trying to make sure we win enough money to fill up this empty space below this Christmas tree. And to give this little dog a Christmas to remember. Thanks for watching. Gimli here would really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. Helps out the channel a ton. And put a comment down below telling me how cute or how ugly this little dog is. Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's get into some hands. What's up, guys? You know what time it is. We're out here to play another cash game session. A little bit higher stakes tonight. This is going to be a 1-2-5 game. Sometimes 10. Going to play a lot more like a 5-10. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And share this video. Do me a favor and share it. It seems like YouTube's not really pushing things out the way they used to for all the poker content creators, from the smallest to the biggest. I had that video that got 6,000 views, and that's not what's happening with these ones recently. So if you have any tips on how I can improve my videos, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any tips on how I can improve my play please leave them down in the comments also green light so we better get going let's get to the table let's get into some hands action starts now into the game for 300 dollars. hopefully we can catch some fire right off the bat double up have a big stack and we won't even have to add on more when the game gets bigger this isn't a session that gets off to a super exciting start we play a couple pretty boring hands then we play a bomb pot i think we end up getting all in on the bomb pot but it's one of those deals where we kind of have one board locked up and the other one we have nothing so we end up chopping off to our first real hand of the night where we're looking down at pocket nines from the small blind. We see a very active high stakes player open to $25 from middle position. I'm going to make the call here and the big blind calls. I think calling in this spot is pretty okay. Nothing too crazy. I don't really see a whole lot of value in three betting here. I don't know. I don't think we're going to have that big of a range advantage. I think we just want to go kind of set mining here. Flop comes out. A great one for us. It's eight, six deuce. I decide we're going to go ahead and donk lead. I think we can just take this one down right now. And I think our hand needs a lot of protection. If somebody has a higher overpair than pocket nines, they're going to let us know. And they would have probably let us know pre-flop with a three bet. So we're going to go ahead and bet out here for $20. We see the big blind fold pretty quickly. And then we see the other player give a little bit of a speech before making the fold. We take this one down. So we're winning it. Feels pretty good. On to the next one. Looking down at three, two clubs from the button. When the action folds me, I'd like to see a flop with this hand. I'm going to call the $5 pre-flop, the small blind calls, and the big blind makes it $15 to go. I don't think this raise here makes very much sense by him or accomplishes very much. So we're going to go ahead and make the call. And headed to see a flop, which is where we hit the record button. Flop is a good one for us. We're flopping a flush draw here on a very connected board. We see the action check to us. I think it's time to put in a bet here. Maybe we can just take this one down. I bet $30 and we very quickly see one fold and another fold. So we're gonna go ahead and take this pot down. I don't hate how we played it. Win a nice little pot. Obviously limping isn't great, but I think from this position it can be okay. And hey, we won, so I'm not here to argue with the results. This next hand isn't a very exciting one, but it's one I really want your guys' opinion on. I look down at ace-queen offsuit from the button. I see that same opponent from earlier who's a very active high-stakes player open to $25 pre-flop. I decide instead of three betting here to just make the call in position with some players still to act behind me. What do you guys think about this? Is this a mandatory three bet spot? Like should I be three betting here every single time? I don't really know. We're off to see a flop which comes down absolutely nothing for us. And, and we see our opponent check to us. Should I be taking the betting lead here? I decide to check back. So let me know if you think I should try and take the betting lead here. Turn comes down the three of diamonds. My opponent bets $25. I don't think I have too much of a decision at this point. I just fold. But what do you think I should do here just in this hand in general? Is this a mandatory three bet? And what should I do when he checks that flop? Looking down at pocket tens and what's going to be one of the biggest hands of the night, we see an early position open to 15. We see one caller. I'm three betting from the small blind here. I'm three betting to $50. We see a snap call from the original early opener. And then we see a call from a very good, uh, slightly loose player that we've played against a lot. So we are off to see a flop. We are dreaming of seeing one particular card on a flop. And we do. We see the 10 of diamonds in the middle of a three diamond board. Yeah, not ideal on a monotone flop, but we're going to bet out here. We're going to use a large sizing. I bet $115. We see the initial razor snap fold, so that's kind of expected. And then we see our other opponent kind of go into the tank here. I'm not really sure what he's going to show up with in this hand. He could have a lot of different holdings. Kind of a tricky spot for him, I would think. But he eventually shoves all in. Kind of a scary deal. All in for around $400 effective. I don't really think we have too many options here. I think we have to call as he's a good enough player to do it with an ace of diamonds or the king of diamonds. 
I put in the money and he agrees to run it twice. So we are off to see two turns and two rivers in a huge pot. He's got the six, five of diamonds. So he did flop a flush. The first turn, bang, is a three of hearts. So we pair the board. We're going to take this one down. Can we see another board pair? The turn on the other board is a brick, but the river is another three. How do we hit two threes here? Full house on both boards. So we are taking down a big pot. I can't believe this is what happened in this one. What a sick run out for us. That is a huge cooler for our opponent who's a super nice guy. Not exactly who we'd want a cooler like this, but winning money, you have to take it in poker. And we're not, we're not sad about this at all. Big pot. We're going to stack up these chips. Felt pretty good to nail both of those runouts. Obviously, we got super lucky in a cooler situation for whoever ends up losing that pot. Big hand, we take it down. Let's build a monster stack. Looking down at King 10 offsuit in this one, we're on the button. We've got around $900 in front of us. I open to $15 after we see a limp. We see a call in the small blind and a call from an active young player in middle position. Flop comes down, not exactly what we were picturing, but it should be pretty good for our range as it's ace high. The action checks to me. I'm going to bet out here. I don't really think there's any reason to not bet out here. We see a fold and we see a call. So the active kid makes the call and we're off to see a turn, which is not exactly what we were hoping for in this hand. Obviously, you want to take it down here. We're going to have tons of aces in our range, though, so we don't feel bad about continuing. Turn comes down to eight of diamonds. We see our opponent check. I'm going to continue firing here. I'm going to bet out $55. Let me know what you guys think of this sizing. We do get some pretty unfortunate news though when he thinks about it for not too long and puts in the call. So off to the river, which is a good one for us. It's the king of spades. He checks. I'm going to snap check back now that I have some showdown value. Unfortunately, we get some bad news. He shows us ace five offsuit. So this is good news in one way because it means we'll be able to print value against this player when we have real aces, but I don't know. Sucks to lose this hand. Kind of surprised he's calling with ace five offsuit. It was ace five suited. Sure. But that flop is obviously a great flop for ace five. So, oh, well on to the next one. Looking down at pocket tens again, we're in middle position this time. We've got around 775 bucks in front of us. We see a tighter player open. I call, we see a call from a very active high stakes player. And then we see the player from the 10-5 hand before raise it up to $60. So we've got pocket tens here. We were playing them a little bit tricky, I think, but in a game where you're guaranteed to go soul multi-way, I'm not really sure what I should do with this hand. Against this raise though, I'm definitely gonna make the call. We're deep enough, he's deep enough, almost everybody at the table is deep enough that we can go set mining with this one. Unfortunately, we go to the flop four-handed and it's all low cards, which is obviously good for us. We see the pre-flop raiser check, I decide it's time to go ahead and bet out here. We're trying to protect our hand against over cards like ace king. I bet out $80. I don't know what I really feel about this play. I think it's kind of okay. We see a immediate call from the player to our left, which is unfortunate. And then we see the young player who made the initial raise make a huge re-raise for a very large size kind of a weird spot here. I'm not sure exactly what I should be doing on this board. I decide just given how he's looking in this hand, the way he bet, I think he's got something pretty strong. He's not somebody I've seen really three bet weak pre-flop especially, and definitely don't think he's re-raising weak on this one. So he could either have a set or he could have a big overpair like aces, kings, or queens, which he's trying to play a little bit tricky. Eventually, I make the fold and we see one other player make the call. So we end up getting to see this whole run out. Unfortunately for us, the river would have helped us. The river was a 10, so we would have ended up with the virtual nuts. But in real time, our fold was good as on the river, the younger player eventually ends up showing pocket king. So we made the right play. Wish we would have somehow made the wrong play and gotten paid off, but that's not really how any of this works. So we're happy with our play, happy with our read just not happy with the end result. Looking down at pocket queens in this one, we're in early position. We raise it up to $15, which is our standard opening size. We see a call from a very loose player, and then we see the young player from the hand before raise it up to $60. So obviously with a premium here, we're gonna be putting in some more money. I don't think there's any reason that we wanna take this hand post flop. I think there could be some reason to flat, maybe kings or aces here, but we are not doing that. We're gonna raise it up. We make it $215 total. 
we see the first player fold as soon as he notices the raise, and then we see the three better go well into the tank before eventually making the fold and saying he had kings. He did not have kings. Uh, there's no chance. I offered him $25 to show me kings, and he didn't do it. So I think he was maybe getting a little bit out of line, or maybe just didn't have a hand that he can call a three bet with. So we take this one down with queens. Not too disappointed in the result. Looking down at ace jack offsuit from middle position, I've got around 600 bucks to start this hand. I open to $20 preflop over a limper, and I get one caller who is not the preflop limper, so who really knows what he's got here? I think he called from the big blind. Flop comes down, king high with two spades, so after I see my opponent check, I think this is going to be a spot where we're going to want to bet a lot. Obviously, I'll have ace king, king queen, king jack, lots of king hands that I'm going to want to start printing value with. So I'm going to bet out $20 here. And after asking if that was 20 bucks and me saying yes, he eventually puts in the call. So we are off to see a turn, which comes down the six of diamonds. Obviously, no help to us. He checks again. I decide we're going to go ahead and bet again. I think two barrels should probably do the job here a lot of the time. Depending on what he has, I'm going to bet out 45 bucks. And without thinking about it for very long, he makes the call again. So kind of unfortunate. We're hoping we could take it down here. But we are off to see a river, which comes down the two of clubs. So it's a full blank. I'm going to keep betting here. I'm, we just saw the flush draw miss. So I'm going to bet just like if I had had ace king or king queen or any of those hands that I would continue trying to get value from. We get some extremely weird news here, though, after he thinks for a second, and it's kind of a long second, to be honest, before going all in. I snap fold here. I kind of wish I would have thought about it. I don't think there's any way I can make the call here. I don't know what he shows for value here. He showed us a nine and claims that he had a pure bluff with no pair. I don't think that is the truth. Although with this insane sizing, nothing besides a wild bluff really makes any sense. I do think pocket nines makes a lot of sense as a hand that he would play this way until the river or maybe king nine and he felt like he had to shove to get me to fold a hand like ace king or king queen. But I don't know if I even really fold those. I think I probably don't. No idea what he really had here. If he bluffed me, good job to you. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is a weird one, guys. Appreciate all the feedback in the comments. Please let me know what you think was going on because this one felt pretty weird. Looking down at ace jack offsuit once again, we're in the cutoff this time. We call an early position raise to 10 and we end up going three ways to the flop. I think calling here is pretty fine against an early position open. I don't really think there's very much value in trying to raise this hand. I'm going to get in trouble a lot of times with it. Off to see a flop, which comes down a great one for us is jack high with two clubs. Action checks to me. I'm going to go ahead and bet out $30 here. We see only one player make the call. So we're glad we got one customer. We've got a very strong hand here. And obviously having the ace of clubs is great. Turn comes down the ace of hearts. So now we've got top two pair. We're in a great position. We see our opponent check. I bet $40 here, which I think is a fairly, fairly small sizing. We're kind of begging for a call here. Really hoping that we can see him put in some more money. Stick around, try and hit his flush draw or whatever he could possibly have. I kind of feel like a flush draw is the only thing he can have. And obviously he can't have the nut flush draw. So I don't think we should be too surprised when he makes the fold. So we take this one down. Wish we could have played a bigger pot. I think I didn't play it the best. But hey, we're stacking chips, so I'm not going to cry about it. Looking down at pocket jacks in this one, we're in middle position. We got around 550 bucks. I see an early position open from a loose player. I'm going to raise it up here. I make it $75 to go. And we see a player who plays basically every hand make the call. And then we see the initial raiser without thinking about it for very long at all. He's a high stakes player, so I don't think he's really too worried about this. Make the call also. So we're off to see a flop. Obviously, we've got a particular card in mind or just low cards would be great, but that is not what we see. Flop comes down, king, queen, six, rainbow. So it being rainbow is great, I guess. I don't really feel like this is a spot I can bet even after the initial raiser checks. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe this is a board that I should be C betting on as I'm going to have all of the pocket kings, pocket queens, king, queen suiteds. I don't know. Lots of stuff like the ace king. I don't think I would want to C bet ace queen on this flop, but let me know what you think. I check though, and the action ends up checking through. Turn comes down. Another pretty awful card for us. It's the ace of diamonds. So that's awful. All the over cards are out there now. The initial raiser bets $110. I don't really think I have too much to think about here. I think this is pretty much just a straight up fold. Let me know how I should have played this though. I think maybe a C bet on this flop could have been an order for around, I don't know, like $100 and $125. But 
you guys tell me what you think. I don't really feel too great about how I played this hand. I also don't feel very great about two over cards on the flop when I've got pocket jacks. Looking down at jack nine of clubs from middle position, we've got about 475 bucks in front of us. I end up limp calling preflop. I know that's not great, but with a hand like this going this many ways, and I'm limp calling for 25 here, so it's a pretty decent sized pot we've got brewing. There's gonna be over $100 in it, and we're four ways, and I think my hand plays pretty well multi-way. So not too many regrets about putting this money in, but obviously we don't wanna be limp calling. That is not a strategy that we really want to be part of our repertoire. We put the money in and we are going to be off to see a flop against three other opponents. Amazing flop for us. We're flopping top two pair here, but it is a monotone board. Yeah, it's all hearts. So when the action checks to me, I clearly need lots of protection on kind of the wettest board possible. I'm going to bet out $55 here. And if we take it down, we're not going to be too sad. We see one fold, we see another fold, and we see one last fold. So we're going to go ahead and take this one down. It's a nice size pot to win and we're not too disappointed, even though we flopped top two pair to take down this hand on this super wet board. So unfortunately, after this hand, we go really card dead for about an hour-ish before we just get fed up and we decide we're gonna go ahead and cash out. We're out of here, even though we're up stuck a lot. We had $900 in front of us at one point and we're cashing out for only 500. Oh well, I'm not too disappointed with how I played. I feel like we ran a little bit bad in a couple of spots and Played a little bit questionably in a couple of spots, but what are you going to do? Cashing out for a profit. Can never be too sad about that. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you for sticking with me on this journey. Not our best session ever. I don't think we played that well. We didn't win that much money, but a win is a win. Merry Christmas to everyone. Hope you had a great holiday season. Happy New Year's. We'll see you on Tuesday with another episode. Have a great holiday season.